However, as gold breaks loose of its unallocated collar, silver will too. Now, if the Fed does consider reevaluating gold from a wholesale market perspective, can you tell us how this would affect and how this would most likely equate to new uh, gold and silver pricing? Yeah, Shane, to do that, we need to put this into historical context. Don't glaze over, guys. This is important. History rhymes. Historically, gold, gold's collateralization of U.S. foreign obligations has reached historic lows, far worse uh, than when we drew attention to this back in March 2020. And you know what happened in March 2020. And given that the Sino-Russian BRICS plus nations are increasingly backing their currencies with gold and hard commodity baskets linked to gold, we see this as one of the main objectives that actually Basel III was forced to address. Now, if the Fed does not move to also at least partly back the dollar with gold, the US dollar will ultimately collapse. Obviously, if other currencies are backing theirs with gold, it's going to devalue greatly against them. And this, is the, that's, this has been the case as every single unbacked fiat currency in history has collapsed against benchmark gold. Now, we see this as the primary reason that the dollar-denominated gold must also be revalued or it'll be drained to zero. The problem is, without an audit, how much of this 8,133 tons is actually physically available to deliver? Now, if we accept that the 8,133 tons of unaudited, I can't get over with that word, unaudited um, Fed gold, um, if we accept that at face value, okay, let's do that for a minute, then the current ratio of gold to foreign debts outstanding is around 5%. Now, this ratio is so far below the 20 to 40% historical average, and based upon the move to reclassify physical gold as a first-year asset, the BIS likely expects this ratio to revert to its historical average. So who's out of kilter here? The, the best case assessment assumes unaudited US gold reserves, let's assume they're not rehypothecated, you know, burdened with multiple ownership claims on them. But if they are, a haircut would have to be imposed. So this ratio could be anywhere between zero to 5%. And for all we know, hmm, I mean, okay, here, and we wonder why no audit's been allowed. I mean, honestly, you know, it starts to stink, doesn't it? So this is where the numbers emerge. Now, even taken at face value, Restoring a 20 to 40% ratio of gold to foreign debts outstanding from current levels put gold at somewhere between $6,000 to $12,000 per ounce. However, the last time the US dollar was questioned was in 1980. And at that point there, when the foreign held treasuries of the US government were 140% collateralized by gold, well, at 1980 levels, it puts gold at over $40,000 an ounce. Look, I'm just saying, guys, okay, at $40,000 an ounce, I assume there will be plenty of sellers. So let's just discount this for now. But just be aware, these are the numbers. All right, Andrew, now for my question here. If gold is revaluated at $6,000 per ounce, what does this mean for silver? Yes, Shane, well, I knew that was coming. Exactly. Where does that put joined at the hip monetary silver? The gold silver cross is currently at around, goodness me, over 80 to one at the moment. That's 80 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Actually, it's higher than that, but never mind. Just, just use a number like that. Even if we don't adjust this to more realistic levels, it still puts silver at a minimum of $75 to $150 an ounce. However, as gold breaks loose of its unallocated collar, silver will too. Now, put a short squeeze on silver, and the historical 16 to 1 ratio becomes magnetic, suggesting a minimum silver price of 375 bucks. Again, just saying these are facts. Uh, look, let's not discount these targets. We are encountering, encountering unprecedented 
circumstances. 50 years of paper gold dilution has arrived at a physical wall and a real equitable gold price is going to emerge, like it or lump it, Fed. And while most of the Eastern Hemisphere central banks, sovereigns, institutions value gold at a zero counterparty risk asset class, so far, and, and, and this is staggering to me, it's escaped most blinkered Western institutions that gold has recently been revalued as a first tier asset. That unlike first tier US dollar treasuries, which it's equivalent to, actually gold has zero counterparty bail-in risk. So it's far, far preferable. And by the time this is realized, possibly after money market funds are gated or when the Fed induced uh, there's a, the Treasury cash futures basis trade it implodes into co collapsing liquidity, which is exactly what we're looking down the barrel at now, as it did in March 2020, prompting the Fed to inject trillions of liquidity into the market to avoid a catastrophic collapse. The dollar price of gold is going to be multiples of today's diluted price.